الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم My dear respected brothers and sisters in this lecture inshallah ta'ala we're going to go through some uh, etiquette of nikah and uh, the wedding banquet and the like and I have uh, picked some benefits from the work of Sheikh al muhaddit Al-Allama Muhammad Nasr al-Din Al-Albani Rahimahullah Ta'ala The Sheikh first he mentioned some of the ayat of the Quran Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said the meaning of which and among his signs is this that he created for you mates from among yourselves that you may dwell in tranquility with them and he has put love and mercy between you between your hearts verily in that are signs for those who reflect surat ar rum and the sheikh he went on to send peace and blessing on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then after that the sheikh is going to share with us some of the etiquette of uh, an nikah so he said first kindness towards your wife when you wish to enter into her it is desirable when one goes into his wife on his on his wedding night to show her kindness such as presenting her with something to drink etc this is found in the hadith narrated by asma bint yazid ibn sakan who said i beautified aisha radiyallahu anha for Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam then called him to come to see her unveiled he came sat to her, next to her and brought a large cup of milk from which he drank then he offered it to Aisha but she lowered her head and felt shy i scolded her and said to her take from the hand of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she then took it and drank some then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to her give some to your companion at that point i said o messenger of allah rather take it yourself and drink and then give it to me from your hand he took it drank some then offered it to me i sat down and put it on my knees then i began rotating it and following it with my lips in order that i might hit the spot from which the prophet sallallahu alaihi had drank then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about some women who were there with me give them some but they said we don't want it i e we're not hungry the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not combine hunger and fibbing collected by imam ahmed Al Humaydi Ahmed reports it with two isnad, one of which supports the other, and it is supported. The second etiquette the Sheikh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, placing your hands on your wife's head and praying for her. The husband should, at the time of consummating the marriage with his wife, or before that, place his hand on the front part of her head mention the name of Allah most high and pray for Allah's blessing as in the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when any of you marries a woman he should hold her forelock mention Allah most high and pray for his blessings saying oh Allah I ask you for the good in her and the good with which you have created her and i seek refuge in you from the evil in her and the evil with which you have created her so this is very important a dua barakallahu fikum and you find this barakallahu fikum in hasan al muslim the fortress of the muslim inshallah ta'ala and this is collected by Abu Dawood 
ابن ماجة الحاكم البيحقي and Abu Ya'la with Hassan Isnad the third etiquette the praying of husband and wife together it is desirable for the husband and wife to pray two rak'ah together on their wedding night this has been narrated from the earliest generation of the Muslims as in the following two narration first on the authority of Abu Sa'id Mawla Abu Asyad who said I got married while I was a slave I invited a number of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst them was Ibn Mas'ud Abu Dar and Hudayfa when the prayer was called Abu Dar began to step forward when the others said to him no he said is it so and they said yes then I stepped forward and led the prayer though I was a slave possessed they taught me saying when your wife comes to you pray to Raqqa then ask Allah for the good of that which has come to you and seek refuge in him from its evil then it is up to you and it is up to your wife Ibn Abi Shayba and Abdul Razak and there is another narration because of the time I will go to the fourth etiquette inshallah ta'ala the Sheikh he said what to say at the time of making love when a Muslim man is about to enter his wife he should always say first Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytana wa jannib shaytana ma razaqtana. You should say, in the name of Allah, O Allah, keep us away from the devil and keep the devil away from that which you may grant us, i.e. of spring and children and the like. About this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after that, if Allah decrees that they will have a child, the devil will never be able to harm that child. Collected by Imam al-Bukhari. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Some scholars say that children are disobedient to their parents usually because the parents forget or forgot to say the above dua before having relations. Number five benefits. How he should come to her. It is allowed for a Muslim man to enter his wife in her vagina from any direction he wishes. From behind or from the front. About this Allah revealed the following verse. Your wives are tilt unto you. So approach your tilt. When? or how you will surat al-baqarah there are also various ahadith on this subject of which i will give only two so inshallah we we'll read because of the time we we'll read only one inshallah ta'ala on the authority of jabir who said the jews used to say that if a man entered his wife in the vagina but from behind their child would become cross-eyed. Then Allah revealed the verse, your wives are as a tilt unto you, so approach your tilt when or how you will. Surah Al-Baqarah. The Prophet wasallam said, from the front or the back, as long as it is not as, as long as it is in the vagina. Uh, this is some of the etiquette, Barakallahu Fikum, of an nikah, and there is more. Making wudu between two acts with one's wives. When a Muslim man has had sexual intercourse 
with his wife in the legal manner and then wishes to return another time he should first perform wudu based on the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when one of you comes to his wife and then wishes to return another time let him perform wudu between the two times in another, in another version the same wudu which he performs for prayer for verily it will in, invigorate his return Muslim Ibn Abi Shayba and others Baydin however is preferable to merely making wudu in such situation Abu Rafi' narrates that the Prophet ﷺ made a round of all his wives one night bathing in the house of each one. He, he, the narrator, asked the Prophet ﷺ, couldn't you have just bathed once? The Prophet ﷺ answered, this way is purer, cleaner, and better. It's collected by Abu Dawood. Nasa'i. Nine, the bathing of husband and wife together. It is permissible for the husband and wife to bathe together in the same place, even though he sees her private part and she sees his. This is established by a number of authentic hadith amongst them on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha who said I used to bathe with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from a single container of water which was placed between us such that our hand collided inside it he used to raise me such that I would say live some for me live some for me she added we were in a state of Janaba i.e in the state of having slept together collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim also from the etiquette of nikah making wudu after having relations and before sleeping it is best for husband and wife not to sleep after having relations until they first perform wudu there are various hadiths about this amongst them first on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha who said whenever the Prophet sallallahu wished to sleep or eat while in a state of Janaba i.e. after having relations and before bathing he would wash his private parts and perform the wudu as for prayer collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim So these are some of the etiquettes, barakallahu feekum, of marriage. And insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, the next lecture, we're going to talk about al-walima. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all beneficial knowledge and righteous action. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear respected brothers and sisters this is actually part two of the etiquette of nikah and the wedding so إن شاء الله تعالى in this part we're going to speak about الوليمة Sheikh Muhammad Nasir Din Al-Albani Rahimahullah Ta'ala He said the obligation of a wedding feast The husband must sponsor a feast after the consummation of the marriage This is based on the order of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Abdul Rahman Ibn Awf to do so And on the hadith narrated by Burayda Ibn Al-Hasib Who said when Ali sought the hand of Fatima 
the Prophet's daughter, radiallahu anha, in marriage, he said that the Prophet said a wedding, and in another version, a bridegroom must have a feast. The narrator said, Sa'd said, a feast of a sheep, someone else said, of such and such a quantity of corn collected by Al Imam Ahmed Al Tabarani, its isnad is acceptable, as Al Hafid ibn Hajar says in Fath Al Bari. The Sunnah of the wedding feast, the following should be observed with regard to the wedding banquet. First, it should be held three days after the first wedding night, since this is the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which has reached us on the authority of Anas who said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi entered upon his wife and sent me to invite some men for food Al-Bukhari and Al-Bayhaqi also on the authority of Anas he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married Safiya and her, free, and her freedom was her dowry. He gave the feast for three days. Abu Ya'la and others, and it is Hassan Hadith. Second, one should invite the righteous to his banquet, whether they be rich or poor. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do not be the friend of any except believers, and have only the pious eat your food. This collected by Abu Dawood, a Tirmidhi and others, it is Sahih. Third, if one is able, he should have a feast of one or more sheep based on the following hadith. Anas said, Abdul Rahman came to Al Madina and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam assigned Sa'd ibn al Rabi' al Ansari as his brother. Sa'd took him to his wife, called for food. And they both ate. Sa'd said, O oh my brother, I am the wealthiest of the people of Al Madina, another version of Al Ansar. So look to half of my property and take it, another version, and I will divide my garden in half. Also, I have two wives, and you, my brother, in Allah have no wife so look to which of mine pleases you more so I can divorce her for you then upon the completion of the prescribed waiting period you may marry her Abdul Rahman said no by Allah may Allah bless you and your family and your property show me the way to the marketplace and so they showed him the way to the marketplace and he went there he bought and he sold and he made a profit in the evening he came back to the people of his house with some dried milk for cooking and some ghee after that after that some time elapsed until he appeared one day with traces of saffron on his garment the prophet ﷺ said to him what is this he said o messenger of allah i have married a woman among the ansar the prophet answered what did you give her for her dowry he answered the weight of five dirham in gold then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said may Allah bless you give a feast if only with one sheep Abdul Rahman said I have seen myself in such a state that if I were to lift a stone I would expect to find some gold or silver under it and I said I saw after his death, that each of his wives inherited 100,000 dinar, is collected by Al-Bukhari 
and Nasa'i and others. Also on the authority of Anas, he said, I never saw the Prophet sponsor such a wedding feast as the one he gave for Zainab. He slaughtered the sheep and fed everyone meat and bread until they ate no more. This collected by Imam al-Bukhari, Muslim and others. The Sheikh said it is allowed to give the wedding banquet with any food which is available and affordable even if that doesn't include meat. This is based on the following hadith narrated by Anas. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed between Khaybar and al Madina for three days during which he had entered with his wife Safiya. Then I invited the Muslims to his wedding feast. There was neither meat nor bread at, the, at his feast, rather leather, eating mats were brought cut and on them were placed dates dried milk and clarified butter the people ate their fill this collectible imam bukhari and muslim and others from this uh, we can understand but because sometimes the situation may be that someone may not have money you know to buy a lamb or something like that alhamdulillah uh, this you can do this inshallah ta'ala you can have chicken or something that is cheaper and things like that alhamdulillah the sharia is flexible walillahi alhamd is flexible participating of the wealthy in the feast with their wealth it is commendable for the wealthy to help in the preparation for the wedding feast based on the hadith narrated by anas about the Prophet's marriage to Safiya. Then, when we were on the road, Umm Sulaim prepared her, mean Safiya, for him, for the Prophet wasallam, and brought her to him at night. And so, the Prophet wasallam, awoke the next morning a new bridegroom. Then he said, whoever has something, let him bring it. Another version, he said, Whoever has an excess of the provision, let him bring it. And as continues. And so the leather eating mats were spread out. Means the mat that they, they, they eat upon. You know, they, 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 sufra, sufra like, a, like, a, like a table, like something that uh, made of leather that they used to, to have. So were spread out. And one man would bring dried milk, another dates, and another clarified butter. And so they made haste is a mixture of the above three things. The people then ate of this and drank from pools of rainwater which were nearby. And that was the wedding feast of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim and others. And I would like to take uh, an opportunity to speak about those who squander so much wealth. Na'udu billah min dalik. They spend millions, subhanallah, trying to have a, a feast. And then in the end, subhanallah, this food is thrown in the garbage. And this is, wallahi, haram. This is haram. And uh, usually marriages like that, they don't last very long because they're all materialistic. People are showing off and competing with others because this one, uh, you know, his daughter's wedding uh, was this much and this one, his son's wedding was this much and they're competing with each other and they don't really take advantage of uh, the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that they can learn from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and how 
his wedding feast was sallallahu alayhi wasallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide the muslims to the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam